Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea and I make vegan travel content. In this vlog, I want to show you a completely different side of New York. Thanks to my friend Winnie for inviting me to spend a weekend at her home located in a town named Beacon. Just a two hour train ride north of NYC, Beacon is a quaint town situated on the Hudson River with a population of 13,000. In contrast, NYC has 8 million residents. I am staying at this charming century-old house owned by Winnie and her husband Edwin. After settling in, we head down to Main Street. Beacon has gained the reputation of being America's coolest small town thanks to its vibrant art scene, stunning natural surroundings, and friendly community. Main Street is the hub of activity, filled with unique shops, cozy cafes, and art galleries. I really love the soy latte at this coffee shop. For my first meal in Beacon, we are having dinner at this vegan-friendly Himalayan restaurant. We ordered vegan fried rice, momo, and Nepal's national dish platter to share. This is my first time having Nepalese food. It tastes like Chinese Indian fusion to me. I love how the Momo's dough is infused with matcha. Afterward, we stumbled upon a poetry slam event. I love random art encounters like this. This is where you will climb. Oh gosh, I'm gonna die <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Here comes the big day, hiking Mount Beacon. Yeah, it's very similar to Tesla, but then like the interior of this car is like, I think is better than Tesla. Can this auto drive? Yeah, it can auto power, but we don't really use Auto that. parallel I haven't, parking? I haven't like played with it enough to trust it. Before our hike, we are going to carb load on vegan donuts. This popular vegan donut shop only opens on the weekend. They make everything from scratch with high quality ingredients. Be sure to come early, they sell out quick. This joint, this beauty. <laughs> I feel so horrible. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Oh, I love this. It smells so good. Each donut is perfectly fluffy and moist with flavorful glazes and fresh toppings, creating a satisfying bite. I had to buy a soy latte from next door to complement the croissant. What an amazing breakfast! I have mixed feelings about the hike as I yearn to immerse myself in nature's beauty, yet I am very unfit at the moment. I honestly don't know if I will be able to make it. Part is really hard. Okay. Oh, the first part is really hard. Yeah, the first part is hard. Then it gets easy. <laughs> okay. It's more chill. Oh my gosh, when you say really hard, it must be like it's really insane hard. for me. Because <laughs> you hike frequently and you say it's really hard. I'm already out of breath from walking the first part of the stairs. After climbing up the initial 200 stairs. We now proceed to a bunch of steep, rocky switchbacks. You got this! As I make my way up the steep inclines, I need to pause every 30 minutes to catch my breath. But each break allows me to take in the surrounding nature and gather my strength to move forward. Finally, after pushing myself beyond my limits, we arrive at the overlook. Accomplished! I'm greeted by a breathtaking panoramic view of the Hudson River. Another cool sight up here is the Incline Railway ruins. This historic railway was used to transport visitors to a casino and hotel up here in the 1900s. But it was later closed due to financial challenges and ultimately destroyed by fire. We need that we're almost at the top. 
was a piece of cake after that first, first deep hill. Thankfully, from the overlook, the hike to the final destination is much easier. This is the fire tower perched atop Mount Beacon. Climbing the tower provides an additional elevation gain, allowing me to reach new heights and enjoy the landscape below. Standing on the fire tower, I feel a sense of accomplishment. I can't believe I made it. We did it we at the top. It. I got stoned. Anybody? Leaning back. Lean back. <laughs> Be careful. I got like taking my sweet time. Stick cash for people. Wow. Snow bonfire. Oh my god, back to like flat land. Wow, it does feel really nice. I'm walking on cloud, I feel like. Back on Main Street, we stopped by this popular cute matcha shop. Oh smells good. They offer a wide variety of matcha drinks, including classic matcha lattes, flavored matcha, boba milk teas, and more. We decided to try their signature matcha latte that has a coconut vanilla cream base. Oh, you like it? Oh, so good. Very creamy. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Then we decided to have healthy lunch at this 100% gluten-free vegetarian cafe and bakery. I'm having the baby kale Caesar salad with crispy chickpeas and cashew crumble. So yum. So cute. Next, we are going to an art exhibition at the Kube Art Center. The building is a former high school that has been turned into a dynamic art space with artist studios and commercial office spaces. The classrooms have been repurposed into art studios, providing artists with dedicated spaces to create. The hallways that was once echo with footsteps of students now showcase a diverse range of artwork. It also serves as a place of community engagement and artistic exploration. Through its exhibitions, workshops, and events, it fosters a sense of connection and collaboration among artists and art enthusiasts alike. I really love the school setting. It allows visitors to appreciate art with a sense of nostalgia. On our way home, we pass by the bonfire event. It is so heartwarming to see how the town regularly hosts events that bring people together and foster a sense of unity. Chef Winnie at work. Chef Winnie. Slowly. For dinner, Chef Winnie is cooking me a spicy noodle dish. The texture of the noodles and the spicy level are perfect. On to my last day in Beacon. Today is a chill day. For my morning coffee, I decided to try a different coffee shop. This one also has a really cute shop at the back. For brunch, we are having Chef Winnie's signature pesto pasta using the basil grown from her garden. Fresh and delicious form to table food.
Then we head out for a nice rainy stroll. It feels so peaceful to stroll through the small town and encounter no one else along the way. This town is perfect for antisocial introverts like me. The view here has inspired iconic landscape paintings. Oh, whoa, this painting is gorgeous. Yeah, so they come here and then paint. Wow! 100 years ago. 100 years ago. Ooh. Oh, careful! This is so pretty. Oh my god. I'm high. I feel high. <laughs> if my hometown Jakarta has an outdoor, clean, and scenic trail like this, I would touch grass every day. I'm so jealous of beaconers. After strolling for half an hour, we've arrived at this abandoned hat factory. Established in 1879, this old mill has been repurposed multiple times throughout the century. It was known as a hat factory before being acquired by a real estate developer in the 90s. Since then, it has remained untouched. As I'm admiring the picturesque landscapes and the charming houses, I couldn't help but imagine what my life would be like living in a tranquil small town like Beacon. Sounds like a nice simple life. For my last stop in Beacon, we are going on a low effort, high reward hike. I know this vlog was shot last year, but I just want to thank you two again for hosting me, showing me around, and feeding me. I am forever grateful for the wonderful time we had together. The water is like really calm. Very calm. <laughs> then it is almost time for me to leave. Chef Winnie feeds me one last time before sending me off to the station. <laughs> that concludes my beacon trip. I had the opportunity to connect with nature, push my boundaries, indulge in delicious vegan food, and enjoy quality time with friends. It was the perfect getaway from the stressful city life. The memories and experiences I had in Beacon will always hold a special place in my heart. Thank you for watching. Please support me by giving this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Also, turn on the notification alert so you'll know when I upload a new video. 